Hey everyone, this is Paul here. Uh, I'm just gonna accompany this little video with a community service warning that we are about to hack the Power Apps attachment control in ways that it really wasn't supposed to be. Um, so this is a bit of a use at your own risk. And um, if you get any behavior different to me, I'd love to hear from you so we can get to the bottom of any quirks. Otherwise, enjoy. Hey, this is Paul here. This video is a follow-up to one that I recorded a bit of a, over a week ago. Uh, and it demonstrated how to handle virtually all binary file formats um, in Power Apps to send it to, say, SharePoint or OneDrive or somewhere else like that using Flow in such a way that makes it really simple, reusable, and addresses a lot of the complexity that has traditionally occurred around this area. One of the things I shot in that video was showing how attachments could be done without using a submit form uh, control. And the nice thing about that is traditionally, if you use the attachment control, it will do multiple attachments, but it sends them all to a SharePoint list or a CDS uh, entity, an individual record. And what if you wanted each of the attachments to be separate in its own document library? So you'd have to use Flow to then find that SharePoint list, um, extract the files and save them to uh, SharePoint yourself and post process. This way avoids this. Okay, so to demonstrate how it works, let me come here and attach some files. I'm just gonna run this in the browser, but it runs on the phone fine. Um, I'll quickly grab a couple of juicy sized files, just some random things from my desktop. I've deliberately chosen these files because they're all fairly large. Let's also grab a sample spreadsheet and we'll grab a Word document. Okay, so um, I've actually written a couple of flows to do this, but let's try the first one, here we go. So this is the one that basically sends this as one big set of data. So it only uses one flow run. Disadvantage of this method is it actually does chew up a bit of memory, but we should be able to prove that it works. Okay, according to this, it's run. Let's go back and have a look in SharePoint. Refresh, <clears throat> and let's see if we have these files. And lo and behold, there they are. Um, just to prove that it actually did work, let's just quickly go and have a look at this sheet here. And you can see that it has actually loaded up the sheet correctly. Uh, so that's working nicely. Right, let's now switch to edit mode and actually see how this was done. Okay, so the first thing that might spring to mind is how I ended up with an attachments control here, because there is actually no such thing when you go hunting through the list of controls to find one. You've got regular controls, but you actually do not have an attachment. So basically, what's the trick? Well, the simple answer is I actually kind of cheated and I inserted myself an edit form and I uh, linked it to a SharePoint list temporarily, and then I copied the attachment control out of that form and pasted it straight into the um, uh, app. So that's how I ended up with the attachment control. So this control is independent of an edit form. So that's how I get that. And that's enough to basically go and grab attachments. So for example, if I get rid of this one and add another attachment, you will see that I can just simply choose one and it will work. And there's the new one. Okay. So the next question is, okay, well, that's great. How do you get the data from here to here? Now, you would think that you could just do something like, hey, for each attachment, basically uh, JSON the data and send it. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. Um, the actual attachment content, and I covered this in my first video, so I'm not gonna rehash it here. Go watch the first video for more detail. But the long and the short of it is, uh, a Content in an attachment control is not accessible in the format needed for JSON to be able to encode it as a binary format. It's hidden away in the bowels of Power App somewhere. But I've put a gallery on the screen. You haven't seen it because I've hidden it. This is the hidden gallery. And what I have done here is taken advantage of something I discovered in the last video. First up, this gallery, its items property is set to attachments control dot attachments. So therefore here's our attachments control. Turns out it has a property called attachments. If I link that to a gallery, um, you get a column called name, which is the file name, value, which is the content. Uh, and there's another property that we don't need right now. So the issue is actually this one here, that APPRES at resource is actually a sort of a special URL that goes to the internal um, Power Apps cache. Now, 
that basically is not, if you wrap that around a JSON function to send it to flow, you are not gonna get the file you want, okay? And so what we're taking advantage of is that image controls, just by virtue of um, their function, have to get data out of the blob storage or Power Apps internal storage, render it so it can be displayed on screen. Now, the thing about image controls, of course, these binary files aren't images, but the image control doesn't know that. And luckily for us, it handles it gracefully. So it, it extracts the data out of here, tries to render it on the screen. Um, and because it's not a PNG or a JPEG or something well known, you don't see anything. If you look really close underneath, you actually can see that there, I do have an image in there. That's probably because of these SVG files are being, being rendered. Anyway, that's uh, beside the point for now. But if you actually go and put the data into an image control, so this item dot value, value is the name of the column that holds the files out of the attachments property. If we put it here, it attempts to render it. That's enough for us to now go and have a look at our first code because here's what it is doing. I am basically not enumerating the attachments control. If you have a look in this code, I've got four lines and at no point am I talking to the attachments control. What I am doing, however, is talking to that hidden gallery. So I'm saying for all items in the gallery, I'm actually going and I'm building a collection and the collection is called processed attachments. So I've just given it that name. And what I've said is in this collection, create a column called name, and it has to be the, the value of that column is whatever the name is in the gallery, AKA that file name there. I've then made another property called the file. Again, I just made that up because this is my collection. And instead of using the value property out of the attachment control, I'm using the image, image2.image. And again, look in my gallery, I have a control, there is image2.image. So in my button, I'm basically getting the decoded or the extracted content out of here. Now this uh, addition, this is just to prove to you that we can do some interesting metadata things because I've just added an extra column called more metadata and I've just simply put the text demo and a random number next to it. So at that point, that's gonna produce me a collection of what I've called processed attachments. It's everything in the attachments control except the files have been extracted in a way that we can work with. At this point, we are converting everything in that collection to JSON. So we're using this JSON function. And JSON takes two values, the data structure to be converted to JSON. And you notice tables, records, primitive values. Well, a collection is a table, so it happily handles a collection. The second parameter is then uh, a flag that says, by the way, include binary data. So this, if it finds a file or anything binary, it will encode it using the data URI format, which you can go and Google yourself. Finally, having called the flow, I then clear the process attachments so that we can do the whole thing again. So just to kind of demonstrate, I'll do this again. I'm gonna press play. I'll delete a couple of these attachments and I'll put a couple of additional ones in. So let me just clear everything out. And you can see the gallery below is also clearing out. Let me just attach some text file. I've got like a simple little text file in here, I'm sure. Two attachments. Now, just to um, demonstrate what that collection looks like that we've been working with, this one here called um, processed attachments, I'm gonna temporarily comment out the clear, just so you can see what data we were sending to, uh, to Flow. So let's just run that. And hopefully that worked. Let's go and look in that collection. And you can see there is process attachments and there's my column called more metadata. There's the name and there's our file that's been uh, extracted. Do you notice it actually comes up with a broken image because it's no longer saying app res because it's attempted to actually render and display that. So that's the beauty of, uh, of that little trick. Um, let's go and have a quick look at flow because the flow that actually did this is called process payload. And we can see that it successfully ran 34 seconds ago. So let's go look at that one. That will be our two files. So let's have a look through the debug quickly and then I'll show you how the flow works. Firstly, you can see it's a fairly small flow. There's basically four actions with an apply to each, so five actions. So we have a Power Apps trigger. And the first thing we do is we get that payload, all of that JSON data that was sent from Power Apps is basically sent into this initialized variable action. So just to make it clear, back in here, 
when I send processed attachments in the JSON function, this is what Flow has received. And in fact, you're looking at the raw data there. So the very next thing I do is then actually parse that, I uh, do a parse JSON because I've already defined, for example, a schema. I've, I already know that in my collection, I put name, the file, and that metadata, more metadata. So I've now told Flow that that's the schema to expect. Flow then produces proper process JSON and each of these are now uh, available to me in the dynamic uh, data panel. So inside the apply to each, what I do is I create the file based on the file name that was sent, for example, appideas.txt. Um, the actual content of the file, I have to turn the data URI format, which is this bit here, a little bit ugly right now, but I'll explain it a bit. I turn that back to binary and I save. And the update file properties was simply putting in that more metadata into the SharePoint list, just to prove that we can also do metadata. And if we go back and have a look in SharePoint and I refresh, you'll see those two new files that have come down. And that's that metadata there. See demo and that random number, just to prove that it, that it could be done. So let's now go and open this flow up and have a closer look at how it works. So here's the basic gist. First up, the initialized variable, that is straight up asking Power Apps. So that's using the old, good old asking Power Apps. With a Power Apps trigger, it's possible to ask Power Apps for parameters. So anyone who does Power Apps and flow work would be familiar with that. Um, then I've done my parse JSON and here is my schema. Now the way I actually generated the schema was I used a sample payload. I ran this flow once, I got what was sent to it and I used sample payload, I pasted it in here and that generated me the schema. Now, truth be told, this is actually entirely optional. You don't have to do this, but here is the advantage of what parse JSON gives you. Because if you look at my apply to each, and if I come into my create file action, can you see how the file name is now a well-known, a well-named data type? Check this out, file name, the file, more metadata. That's what parse JSON gives you. It takes all of that blob of data and makes it meaningful for subsequent flow actions. So, what I've done here is I've said, okay, create a file. Its file name is whatever's in the name and the file content. And here's the magic. I'm actually using a function called data URI to binary. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, for the current record, item basically brings back the current record from what's come in the JSON. Give me the file and convert it from a data URI back to binary. And that then is the file content. And the final stage is just to then update some metadata. So I've said, hey, in this same library, go and find that file we just created in this previous step and set it to more metadata. So a really simple flow, really, at the end of the day that handles all of those different type of uh, files and attachments. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's go and look at this other op uh, option, because I suppose the disadvantage of this is if you're dealing with really big files or high res photos and things like that, you know, attachments plus photos, it's possible you could run into some memory issues, particularly on older devices if you're doing this uh, on phones because they typically have mess less memory than a browser. And, and I've found in particular Apple phones are the first to go. They have less memory than the equivalent Android phones. But the great thing is that was one single flow run. We sent it in one hit to flow process payload and flow basically looped around and extracted each individual photo out of there. Now let's look at this button. This button, the code to call it is actually really simple. Once again, we're processing the gallery. So we're going, hey, for all items in that gallery down here, and this time we are calling the flow for each individual record in the gallery, each attachment. So you can see here that I'm calling the JSON function and I'm saying, hey, this time it's a record because that squiggle is the JSON record delineator. And I've said, okay, I'm gonna create a column called name and it's whatever the name field is in the gallery. Remember the gallery is linked to the attachments control. Uh, there's my the file and that again, I'm going image two dot image. Remember the image two was that image control that I put there that extracts the content out of the cache. And then if I just go back to the button, I'm generating my metadata and I'm still telling it to include binary data. So that is it, okay? So the advantage of this one is less memory is consumed because it does each file one at a time. It extracts it out of, um, 
extracts each file from uh, Power Apps cache into the image control and then sends it. So a little bit more efficient than basically looping around and building out a giant JSON of all of them at once. So if you're concerned about memory, you can use it this way. The flow now, if we go and have a look at the flow for this one, so process payload two looks like this. Uh, you'll notice this time we don't have an apply to each. Why? Well, we're not sending an array of images anymore. The JSON we're sending is for one single record. So all we do here is, once again, we're using the ask in Power Apps to basically say, hey, give us all the JSON from Power Apps. Um, this time when we process the attachment, the actual schema, the difference really between this uh, flow and the other is this flow does not define an array. It simply says, I'm going to get an object and it's going to have name, the file and more metadata. If you look closely at the schema for the other flow, it, also, it actually says I'm expecting an array and there's going to be an array of objects with this schema. So that's the subtle difference. But what that means is, like, once again, I've got to create file action using the file name, using the data URI to binary, and then I'm updating the file properties to put in the metadata. Uh, and if you look in the flow runs, you'll see that this one typically has more runs than the others. So you can see here 25, 25, 25, 25. That's because I had four items in the attachment when I did this. Each one is reasonably quick to run, but if you then compare it with the, uh, the other process payload, less flow runs, but of course, they, it, it takes longer to run because it'll be a combined one. You can see here, you know, 18 seconds, 22 seconds. Now to remind you what I said at the start, I would be remiss if I didn't warn you that this is 100% at your own risk. Uh, as I was testing this, I found some quirky behavior at times and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So please leave comments if you can pin down some of the issues. I think there's something to do with concurrence and memory, but at times I found certain attachments got skipped when I did it this way. Uh, but I've decided to record the video anyway, just because I'm interested in uh, whether others can reproduce what I saw. So again, test, 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 really, really important. Hopefully that gives you enough to uh, do this on your own. I don't like that I have to have a hidden gallery in here, but it does offer considerable flexibility when handling um, binary files in different ways. So let me know if that was a help to you, and I look forward to hearing your feedback.